Be the just tan bears. bears. Huh? <laughs> the tan bears. <laughs> it's an offshoot of the Care Bears. <laughs> yeah, just when you thought they could become more cuddly. <laughs> yeah, in China they crossbred with the uh, pandas and became the white and gray oh. bears. <laughs> now that they're really hungry. Yes, yes, now that they're really hungry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Which so, okay. is I have the A1 first. You guys are from the north. And I have a uh, wind and wind. Which one? Which one? It's Manitoba where they're having fun. So. Oh, are they? Yeah. Do the. Oh, uh, the is going to start melting uh, your face. That's the ones are yep. the, in the um, in the preset. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe it isn't there. You think this would be on the one panel? No. If you don't have the anything from the enhancer disc. Sorry. No. Sorry. Not the enhancer. The disc that came with the one thousand came with a bunch of extras on it. Remember it had the little um I had never, little I never had one done. Oh I think you said you had a one thousand. Oh you're talking about the A the A one thousand right now. Well I have an A one thousand but I don't have an X one thousand. Well the X one thousand right. So we get rid of that thing. Right, but I don't know if that's on it because I think it was only done for the one thousand. Yeah. Well, I like this one. I see. Oh, I used to have those things on all. I used to have all the hound how things on my um, on my own one of my classics. It was like when it booted up, it said that. When something went wrong, it said, "I'm sorry, Dave. I cannot do that." <laughs> all that good. <laughs> we should have like more, you know, error sounds and things like that, Mr. Sound. Do you mean? More sounds, more blame. Yeah, that sounds like a kind of, that sounds like something Maddie OS would be very well. I, I, I well, it would, but it would also yeah. make the screen throb when it when it no. did. No, and it would do it in like 64-bit sound. You know, seven speakers channels. Uh, you're, you're worse than I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. It would take eight <laughs> megabytes. Found it. There Took is. a while. Sending Erex messages. Well, you had it. You were right on it. Didn't you click on the link? Yeah, it took that long to load. Did it really? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, that explains everything. How to send the messages with the sample program, how to receive the messages, and. Um, this is forbidden nonsense. Uh, that's to find the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. We still got to do it. Look at that. Everything's all like nice. This is when you're really into it. Yeah, this is when I still care. <laughs> Actually, no, you know what it was? it was? This is when editing a wiki was still an interesting thing, even though it took you a week to write the damn thing and edit it. So, it's like, geez, there's not enough time in the day. God. There isn't enough time in the day. No, this is exactly right. Yeah, yeah that's the technique. Yeah. It's almost like you're doing it right. Well, I took it from the sample that was in the in the OS, but it was all mung together, and I cut it up into three separate programs and chopped up the bits and explained them, and then yes. made three uh, three programs out of it. I forgot all about it. Very well done. Yeah. yeah. This is handy. Do I get a star? I got something better for you. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Why does he start hitting snickering back there? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> well, could you please come and sit up front? I don't really. <laughs> Are you sure you want me to? <laughs> I don't want you behind me. <laughs> oh no. He's in the right position. <laughs> Yeah, no, I copied it down there. Uh, you sure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
It's small, man. So we can cope. It, how, and this is the sure you did. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hit it a little bit because you have you have an Amy West uh, 2017 folder. Oh, you put it in there. Oh, 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 oh. And there's a bit by bit. Ah, there it is. So okay. there's a. Uh, you want me to put that in the on the hard drive or just leave yeah, it where it whatever. Is? I just uh, I copied. I, I just built the uh, the freeware version uh, of the uh, the current one. So um, I know what's wrong with the front. The uh, but there's also a set of icons multiple in there. Okay. From uh, IP Mason. Oh, oh nice. nice. So if you've got happen to us your SDK or browser, you want like the little launch uh, panel thing, or or you actually have to be the UD stuff that yeah. through it. So we'll do this. Click click out of the oh. Yeah. Um, you, you, um, Michelle. So maybe what you need to do is maybe set your ID to stack it. Oh, we, we don't show that in uh, oh, show that. We, we um. So you yeah. So in the icons folder. Um, in bit, inside bit by bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you open up the, the icons. Yeah, right. Right. Of course not. There's some um, sample ones that you can steal to, uh, you know, just for like a whole, That's like a dock launcher. That's what I use. The whole the line. The reason we can't get in now is because it's uh, uh, giving us yeah. multiple servers. They're just icons. Yeah. Just a copy. Yeah. There's a PNG yeah. version of the other one oh, on there too. It doesn't show up on there. So. Yeah, I don't use PNG icons. That's why. <laughs> I refuse to use them. But, uh, but yeah, I can. I can show you. No, you don't need that. You want some stuff on it? I still like to use a brand that's all I So that's for. I mean, that that's what's going to go up onto the uh, the website for the next. It's just a maintenance update, the freeware version, so everybody can. Mm -hmm. right now. Well, that's another thing we should throw in the SDK release, whatever the last freeware version is. If yes, yeah. two, one, four. Yeah. yeah. At the moment, we now hopefully, uh, my hotel problem. We end up hopefully my uh, auto docs aren't too uh, corrupted um. for your parser. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> no guarantees. Uh, no, I just said it. Okay. Um, but you can, if you want the default font, so what you can do, once you set the dimensions of the uh, uh, the actual software, like I popped it up to a full, win, you know, full window, you can set that size and then an alternate size and set stuff uh, in here for the uh, uh, number of tabs. I usually like two tabs when I'm doing my stuff. And, and I've set the fonts now. You can just jump back to the system fonts just by clicking that, so it's really easy to jump back to defaults. But once you set that, uh, some things on here, you can go over to the main and save settings. And you can't actually see the display bar. I'm going to this up a little bit because we don't have quite all the, the view. There we go. There it is. Save settings. So that saved off a little XML file. Um, so that's that's a good example. We can just use that for the uh, search, but um, just going through the basics. Uh, of course, this it parses out all the XML files to give you a breakdown of, of everything it can figure out, and of course, it hits this quite often. Unfortunately, no uh, no corresponding documentation. GA Rex, but. Um, uh, <laughs> the, the way I use this a lot myself is, you know, just quick lookups uh, for different things. So, like, if I want to jump from libraries to commands, and libraries is, is everything. I use the cursors here. Um, it's the the library and then the commands and, and uh, API calls and then the uh, actual parameters underneath there. So you can see breakdown and, and you can see that you know it, it tries to jump through the uh, uh, the Autodoc file to find references to whatever you're looking at. The, uh, and it also, from whatever level you're at, so look here, if you're at the libraries here and you wanted to find something, I want to say graphics, you just, just start typing it. You'll see on, on the bottom display there, you can type 
continue to type, you know, as, as much as you need to find the individual things. So, you know, get screen mode, whatever, and find that. Um, but if you're in, if you're under, let's go back to the library and come like Zach. And of course, there you can see the, the multiple interfaces are broken out. So it finds each interface inside the XML file, and you can get to uh, to any of them. Uh, so uh, if I'm inside this library, uh, looking at a actual command uh, or an API call, and I do the same thing, typing for something else, you know, I want to find it. Now it's you know searching down that that level. So now, and if you can go to the commands. Uh, libraries, commands, autodocs includes structures and the search results is what's currently in here. Uh, later, I will be adding parsing for uh, defines, uh, and you know, so it actually picks up all the enumerators and everything right now. The uh, so right now in structures, it's you know, it, it finds all the structures it can for you. So every, everything that begins with a, a struct anywhere within the system and anywhere within the API SDK stuff. So uh, keyboard commands uh, can be used for a lot of the stuff. Um, tab, rotating through the different uh, search stuff, or one, two, three, four, you know, just a quick jump to commands. A lot of times I'm looking for a, 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 an individual command reference. It's like, well, what is the what is the actual parameters for you know a string function? So I'll just pop up and I you can it so say it's an F. it's already loaded it's hidden it's a commodity uh, I just pop the pop it up with F1 and then I go to commands and I'm searching for string oh there we go you know string and comp stuff and so you can find find whatever that way uh, we can also uh, let's see enable set background transfers. I don't know on this system whether you've got uh, anything set for the GUI, but you can you can make this. In fact, it's by default. Well, I think it probably is coming through uh, uh, transparent. So it's like there's the, the background on this uh, uh, actual text view uh, is you know following the, the GUI prep. So you can you can have it where it renders in the graphic background, so you get a fancy background pattern or whatever, or you can turn that off. So whatever you need on that. Uh, let's see, and it saves, it saves that stuff as well. So uh, searching is one of the, the biggest things that I, I do with it. Now you can do search from the menu up here, uh, find files, uh, search the entire SDK, just the autodocs, just the includes, uh, search the file browser path, or search a directory. And then the one that's posted out here is search within search results. So if you, um, if you're looking for, say, like every single XML file in the system, you can uh, say uh, search, uh, grep search in dir, and I'm just going to pick the, uh, oh, what do we got for the, the system drive here? Workbench. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll just go workbench. We're looking for XML files. Workbench, so now, so it's filling in your, your you know, search uh, statement. So I'm, I'm grep searching in Zer for workbench, and of course I can pop this back up again or type in whatever I want. Um, and in this case, I can uh, find, I can filter it uh, and say I'm only going to look inside of XML files, and then I'm going to look for um, ooh, something something common, like let's just see like a uh, prep, and then you can uh, tell it to ignore the case or or not and just generally get the turn on there. And then it just finds it's, you know, all the, uh, uh, the XML files, and that's a pretty quick one. So there it's highlighting the, the, the keyword I was looking for, and it found all of them. So it tells you where they are down here. And if you want to do something more with it, you can take and send the file to editor, multi-view, web browser, PDF viewer, or on our so it, it tries to help you get it to you know what other software you need to. So if you find an archive and you want to unpack it, you can just throw it right to it. So if I wanted to edit this, 
I throw it in the editor, and of course, my default path, I'm looking for assistive to lacing, send ed. So I want to change that. Um, let's just get this out of the way a second. There's a couple different ways to do that. Um, one is with the tool types in here. Uh, so if I want to change the, uh, the editor, right now it is defined on here uh, as my sample. So I've got, you know, all the stuff in parentheses is just commented out, so the, you can set it to whatever else, but, um, you know, let's see, where is the uh, main editor on this, this guy? You were using Cygnus, but where did you hide it? I think it's in build. Just do after. Oh, yeah, okay. try that. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, this was, I, I did this originally, uh, well, what, 2004, so, uh, let's see, we can just change this guy to after colon add. Oh. Okay. Use that C -E. one. Oh. Yeah. C E D. Yeah. Oh, well, it was launching ad specifically, but so now it'll probably find the other ad if you've got it on the if you ran it. Uh, I don't remember what year that was. Well, let's check the file browser. <laughs> Hopefully never. <laughs> you know, that's the worst. Don't show up anything in there. Because it's a device. Um, I think you have to change your tool type. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tool type, or you can also do it on the, uh, the command line. Uh, if it's just a temporary thing you want to. Now, of course, it's a, it's a commodity, and it's going to, it really wants to stay resident, because I didn't want to have to um, take in Reparse everything from scratch every single time you wanted it. So the, the whole goal is once it loads, it's really good at hiding, but it stays there all the time, you know, until you deliberately tell it to quit. Uh, either through the commodity exchange, you know, or, or uh, taking it, you know, just go quit through the menu. But if I run it again, now it's reparsing. Now this is one of the one of the improvements that I was working on for Tor version 3, uh, which takes this whole uh, parsing step, which you can see, I can probably show that a little easier with the about, actually. Uh, oh, an SDK browser. Um, you can see that it parsed 119 libraries, 5,135 uh, commands, 926 structures, and 235 Autodoc files. And it's not bad on this system. Uh, on the uh, X5000 uh, with a SSD drive uh, is like that. I mean, but I know on a lot of the older systems or emulation or whatever, it can take a while to, to come up. And that was one of the things I wanted to address. So the, the next step was parse all of that, organize it all into my tree structure, save it back out into a cached organization of it where it didn't have to go look and or figure it all out. It could just load up the one file, reconstruct itself, and then if you needed to, if you changed SDKs, you could just tell it, go parse it again, or delete the cache file, and we'll just go get it again from scratch. So that's one of the improvements coming uh, for later versions. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let's see if it, uh, uh, so we wanted to look at something in the page, so you get the compiler. We wanted to throw that to, the, uh, where's my, oh yeah, 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 I've got the other opens as well. So send the, uh, send the file to the editor, and there it goes, it, it found the old ed, because that's what it's going to draw, because that's what I cut it down to, but, but you can also uh, open a new shell, um, so it will, It, uh, it takes the path of, uh, of wherever the file is and uh, takes and opens up a, a new shell uh, for you. Now, if you look under uh, T, let me go up somewhere. Oh, yeah. There it is. Um, <laughs> SDK browser, uh, you know, shell startup. So if I want to, I can go here. My T is on hard. Ah. <laughs> So I want to find that SDK browser shell startup. 
and let's send it to Google. Right. So what it's done whenever you take it, say, you know, open a new shell, is it just it, it takes your shell startup sequence and um, uh, takes and appends uh, start to it. Thank you. Guys. Sorry. That was Aaron, by the way. He's probably wondering why I haven't uh, passed out all this discount stuff yet <laughs> from Geek on the Lake. Where's the hit on the website? I'm waiting for the Tell them the show doesn't start till Saturday. <laughs> this is the uh, yeah. DevCon. This is the pregame. <laughs> yeah, but I've, I've still got, uh, I've got, got them right over there, actually. I've got 10% uh, uh, discount uh, codes and uh, with for during the show. Yeah. So. It's active right now, so I give you guys a jump on anything you wanted to get for 10% off anything on the store. And then there's a follow-up one for 7% uh, off till the end of the month. So two separate codes that you can use to, uh, so if you forget something. So we can get 17%. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you see, you, know, you, get, you get 10 off the first one and 7 off the second. Yes. But that also That's not what it's not 17. <laughs> 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 so yeah, but it is it is off of uh, everything. So um, yeah, so like I said, uh, when you you open it up into a new shell, then it just grabs your uh, start shell startup sequence, creates a temporary one uh, where it appends the the CD to the location on there, and then opens it up. You know, so it's um, Also, uh, open in workbench window. Um, which of course is not going to work on here. It does the AREX. Isn't, isn't that on here? What on here? Sorry. Uh, huh. Well, you can see it's, it's it's trying to use an AREX command to the uh, to the workbench uh, to the workbench. Well, to tell the workbench work. might not Jamie? be normal. Oh, I replaced it with my workbench. <laughs> you did what? Yes. You went your own special compilability? Yeah. Because I don't know. I'm doing something. An Amiga user hacked their system. Their yeah. system. Well, no, no, wait. Oh, An Amiga thought. user of access to the source code. <laughs> system. Why doesn't it say solely all over the copyright? No, solely patch. Not yet. I'm working on it. Well, well, sorry. I, I probably it's probably because of my special build of workbench library. Yeah. So I'm doing if something. it was standard, and you know, it, it, just, it just does an AREX command to the workbench itself yep. to tell it to open up a window at that location. So it's just a convenience thing again. What? What? So He's trying to make the workbench operate a little more like a shell. We can get closer. <laughs> <laughs> None of these damn and pretty icons. So if we search the entire SDK, well, this is a this is a grub search operation. We're gonna look for S <laughs> and here it's digging through everything in uh, under SDK colon, uh, opening up every file, looking for that. It's not my line. You're not. Maybe you're. you're, you're maybe small. actually, you should probably just try one else. Uh, well, usually used to two. Depends on the mood. Shouldn't find anything. <laughs> you can't interrupt the search. Yes, you can. Uh, so I'm doing the long one so I can show you. Uh, you can pause it. Oh, there it is. And resume. And can you change your mind? Yeah, you can stop. No, I mean ignore case. Oh no, you can't change your mind. What do you mean? Start not ignoring case now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on the fly. Yeah, 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 yeah. on the fly. <laughs> oh yeah. Well you could. It's possible. Yeah, you never know. People are weird. I don't know why you would, but you know. Because you can. Because you can. It's just because. So, uh, do you have uh, do you have commodity exchange running on here? Yep. Yeah. What's the hotkey to bring it up? Do you have a hotkey for it? Hotkey? Yes. Function key. That's your uncle's keyboard. Uh, yep, that's key. a window program. You would use a command line. <laughs> oh, look at that finding cup. There we go. Execute. And as these are coming in, you can you can browse them. It's a multitasking search. Looking for. Look at all the songs. In the header files. Yes, in the header files. Mm -hmm. 
And it's still looking. Let's see if I can find the uh, commodities here. Utilities, commodities, uh, exchange. So much junk in there. Right. So the SDK oh, browser. Control all help. There you can see it's, it's it's still working on the search, but if you through the commodity exchange, you tell it to become inactive, it pauses the search. Um, so you know, and do something with that active inactive thing. So I thought that was the best approach. You can just say, "That's cute." For, just just pause that for a yeah. moment while I you know do something else with the disk. So yeah, so you can uh, uh, and of course it it does follow the the uh, hide interface, uh, show interface. And ultimately, the uh, the remove uh, for it. Good. Can't click to front. Click to front. I yeah. That program. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> just dealing with a luddite system. <laughs> if you don't use a graphical interface, then what? You don't need. Yeah, I know. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so why don't you provide a CLI interface to the? Okay, he's proud of this. Mr. Solly, why don't you provide a CLA interface to the uh, commodity exchange? I rarely ever look at that thing. What's it for? <laughs> you can control your data. <laughs> Let alone an AREX port. That would be good thing to have an AREX port on it. We don't really have very good uh, uh, command line level process controls. Not great. Not not anywhere near them. No, no, it's 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 very very primitive, very primitive. Status break. Yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah. I saw so, mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Good luck. Another thing I added. Um, this isn't really new. I mean, some of the stuff I'm going over, I don't know what you've seen before. So, it's uh, the. Uh, dynamic uh, acceleration of the mouse wheel for scrolling. Uh, yeah. I really got tired of having to scroll through long stuff just a little bit at a time. So the faster you go with the wheel, the faster it scrolls progressively. And then when it, you stop or slow down, then it shrinks it back again and returns. So if you, you find a, a large file, that's pretty good. And Let's see, if I go up here, I know I grab this program. That's not what you go to uh, enable mouse wheel acceleration is on by default. It can be turned off by uh, <coughs> the uh, tool types, of course, as, as well. And I'm just going to turn it off. And now it doesn't matter how fast I go with the wheel, it's 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 stuck at this speed. Then um, if I turn it back on, you're a big wheel fan. Then, it, then you can just jump <laughs> huge pages at a time. So you're probably taking your hands off the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like you, you, you will notice the keyboard can be used for full navigation here. Yes. So yes, no, I, I, I very much like to have. My my theory yeah. is that you want to have at least three ways to do anything. You know, so if you you're you, a Pearl fan, yeah. I couldn't help myself. Why three when you might have five? Uh, have five. <laughs> so, so now we've we searched through uh, uh, the whole SDK and we found all instances of uh, of Soli's trademark little name on there. So now, if we want to find something within this, so that was the first rep search we found, kind of a global thing. Now we want to filter that down some more. And find something more specific. So you know, I went a little too wide. Um, give me a, a keyword uh, in there. What have you What have you changed in here recently? What is the last one? Oh, graphic something. Did you ever fix the uh, polling and uh, for version dot library and workbench dot library? Did anybody ever fix that? Something was done there. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that was a while back. It was years ago. I found out. I was like, why is there all these balls in that library? library. It was because, like, every second <coughs> it was pulling because you had yeah. included in the yeah. workbench yeah. title. I thought that was uh, done. Yeah, we found that here. Is there, would there be a comment somewhere with the word pulling in it, maybe? 
So no uh, workbench. No graphics. Workbench. Okay, so if we okay. go down okay. here and we go search within search results, um, then we look for workbench. And ignore case is still on, just in you know, case. And then we just, and then you can see it's just taking out everything. It doesn't find workbench. I love that dynamic read. That, uh, that's, a, that's nice. That's so powerful. It was, uh, <laughs> it was a must. I had to see it working. Live updates, man. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is neat. So let's see. Um, yeah, you know what I, I realized on the, I, I don't know, maybe it's the SATA driver on the uh, uh, the X5000, but I, I'm here, uh, like a, a SAM 460, I can I can do that pause and resume yeah. very easily. And of course, it's taking a little longer to to do the whole search, but on the X5000, it's like, it's too fast. You got to sneak it in there. It's it just fast. doesn't, it doesn't want to hook the, the button, you know, even though it's just, so, I don't know. You got to slow it down. Slow. It's a slow down what though? I mean, it's it's I, I I suspect it's the disk activity just maxing it out, or all the processing is going to handle the drive I/O, and it's just not getting back to the graphical interface. I mean, is there unless there is some other hook, uh, some you know some way to take and catch it that I should be doing something you change? It's still I mean, this is the latest code, and it still works exactly uh, as it did. Uh, you know, when I, I wrote it, and you know, mostly on a uh, microwave one at the time, you know, so it's it's very reactive to. Is the to disk that. attached to the onboard SATA or to a, an external card? I have no idea. Well, check it out because one of the things I have noticed is that when I do a lot of um, sequential reads from yeah. the disk, and if it's connected to the onboard SATA, it there's a lot of CPU cycles. That can eat up. The oh yeah, on, on mine. The performance is fine, but the but it's it's eating up CPU cycles like mad. Yes. And my, there's probably something at some point in the driver from the Linux world, you know, that's, I don't know how to do, perform, I don't know how to do performance modeling on, on the Amiga at all. I don't know how to do storage storage. But yeah, on, on, on my system it is, it's a uh, SSD drive. Yeah, on the, same, on yeah, the yeah so if you have like a sequential read thing, it just, it just sucks up CPU. Yeah. Like, yeah. like man. It's using, it's using DMA, isn't it? Depends what you need. Within the SATA to, to actually pull the yes, you know, kind of there is no way. The there is no other way. So there is no other. It way. isn't right. So it's using only DMA. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's being not being copied three times by the other pieces. So. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so there's still a heavy load on the CPU. Probably some other pieces copying. Yeah. This is it's anecdotal observation, but it does seem to hold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably library or something. Yeah. yeah. Is it, it doesn't know what DMA is, right? Because it's you can get it off the disk, but now what? How does it get to your program? Right. <laughs> That's the mystery. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> copy probably. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. Just, yeah. You know, so yeah. you pulled it up off the, the physical drive. But now you've yeah. got to copy it. And the, the rest of the system the, has to do whatever yeah. it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suspect. Yeah. You can just bring it right off the drive, drop it in some shared memory, and say, "There it is." This DMA up right there. It is pretty quick. Depends. <laughs> oh, you have no weird stick. What? If it's nothing new, and I add an old one, like oh, the old one. Are you using NGFS? Yeah. That helps. It is very, it was very quick. I, I looked at, I double clicked on it, looked at it. Less copying. It, it was, well, he's a, he's a cache man. Yeah, but that's, caches are copying. Could what number a, version is that? This is 214. This is 214. Okay. Uh, so there's only, uh, well, actually, let's, let's look. Because if you go to, oh yeah, my history, um, to uh, take some pics out of any of the last, uh, you know, 20 items that you've gone to, and you can browse back, uh, pick an individual one, or just browse forward or back through whatever you found. It doesn't matter where it came from. So if we take the, uh, of course, it fully supports uh, drag and drop uh, operations. So right now, it's it's uh, really only a text reader. 
but that's what all the, the send to commands and everything are supposed to help you get it to another reader. But I have, I do want to take a look at, at opening it up to uh, maybe tap it to uh, a multi-view type of a, a view, so it would actually handle different data types within the main view. Um, of course, one of the key things that it needs is uh, context sensitive highlighting, especially for the star scope. So I, I really miss that. Uh, different colors and emphasis on the, the code. Use the rich text gadget instead of. Yes, I considered that. I mean, where's the where's the documentation? Is it available to be publicly used? Yeah. That was my question. No. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? It's in code patch that's publicly available. No, code. He's got uh, special permission. Yeah. Right. It's private. Simon's got it. Yeah, Simon has permission to use it and enhanced it for his uh, project. I was looking at that. Because yep. I was considering that. It's like, well, can I just drop it and use the existing data type? But uh, that's private, so I, if I talk to you about it, nice. so. <laughs> But yeah, so, ooh, there's a nice guy there. You can see the screen waving. Yeah. This is the latest <laughs> effects I've just added. <laughs> so, so when you sit there idle, it's just my name. Yeah, yeah. Actually, there used to be a hack on the classic Amigas that would do that. Yeah, it did a blitter yeah. trick. I did that once to my my sister. Used used to use my what the, old Amiga what for the using things? programs. And in the middle of the night, she'd be in there writing papers for school or something like that. And I set the thing to go off about 2 a.m. <laughs> 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 yeah, so you do a browsing uh, auto doc results on here. If I double click on an API call, it then jumps to, in, in the table of contents, yes. it'll then jump to that to the auto doc call. Now, I don't know if that's a feature or if that's just a search that it's doing. And no, it's, going to the next it's, it's a feature. It is a feature. Yeah. Yeah, so it's very convenient. By the way. Oh yeah, thanks. I, I was just going to try to take and show that actually. So here you're looking at like there's the tech types, and if you double click on types, it's going to go. Well, you know, it's going to try to find the header file. Now it's it's a little limited right now, so it can be so quick. Uh, it's limited to what it already knows from the parse, right? So if it didn't figure out um, down here that exec types was an include that was already parsed, it wouldn't know where to jump to it. And in fact, you'll, you'll see some uh, parsing information down there if I try to uh, click on something. All right, right there, examining type 1, x equals 18 equals x. And they, you know, <laughs> this is my little internal output uh, that I still have in there that, that tells me where it, what it looked at to try to, uh, to figure out what it was. Now, something like extern or global, these guys will be linkable once I add parsing for the defines. Uh, if you click on a, uh, a structure, um, to uh, struct, like that, so, uh, that one, struct is that base, well, I'm actually, I'm already there, so if I go to my search results again, I found mostly higher pod stuff. Um, for something that's not defined, referenced in here, message maybe, uh, struct message. Yes, it's it, it, uh, very common. <laughs> yes, it needs to, it needs to know where. So this is a notify. Yeah, it's not, it's not parsing that one out, unfortunately. Um, it's not perfect, but what I'm aiming for eventually is a, a full dynamic um, source browsing. So you know you can it will it will dynamically parse the uh, the source that you're looking at, and it will take and uh, uh, be able to trace back to you know everything within the program. So, uh, but yes, I mean when in doubt. Uh, you know, just you can just try double clicking on anything, and if it if it can't find it as a uh, a command reference, um, it will uh, take and uh, usually copy it down for finding. You know, it's like message. It didn't find message, but it copied it down into the search text. 
you know, so you can then take and just search for, you know, forward, forward, whatever. Um, let's see. So, oh yeah, find the 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 bug fix for two one four uh, had to do with the, uh, the find files in Dir. So all the other searching uh, mechanisms are look inside the files to find something for me. So it's a crap search. Um, but I realized that you know there's sometimes you just want to find the files, uh, not just the contents you know in the files. So if I take and go pick a path here, and again uh, I'm going to look at Workbench, and now um, I've got find files in Dura, I've got Workbench as my path, and there's my pattern, and it's all about the pattern at this point for what you're actually looking for for files. So if I'm looking for uh, .xml files, it'll find you know all of them uh, within there. And, uh, and it's just it's just literally finding the files anywhere in the system instead of taking and finding a reference within them. So the last time I did that, I searched grep search in all the XML files for something, and sort of filtered down. This in this case, I just wanted to find all of the XML files to begin with. Now that they're in the search results, now I could take and go, you know, search and search results and look for and you know, like something mine maybe, and that's like that. So. The, uh, so it just goes right up. The uh, file browser is your other tab. Uh, you also have Alt Tab to uh, keyboard switch between those guys. Um, and you know this is just literally uh, it's just literally a convenient you know file browser area. So right now I was looking at T defaults to looking in the SDK itself, um, but you can change it to wherever whatever path. And uh, so, if you're looking for the, the version, and so this is a uh, the idea behind this originally was to try to give you the ability to browse through your own source code or somebody else's source code or whatever. So you had that dynamic file browsing uh, capability, and if you go into the uh, subdirectories looking for uh, individual stuff and. Oh, that's that's another uh, element. I want to take and add a, a hex edit display uh, for binaries. So um, you've got so you can pair it back uh, with the parent on here, and also no matter where you are on there, you can hit root and it'll just go back to whatever this path is, um, or same thing up here, parents or or root on there. It's I haven't really changed this at all since I originally slapped it together. So I, I do want to do things like some of the things that bother me is it, it mixes all the directories and the files together in the same list alphabetically. And I prefer the option of being able to see all the directories sorted than all the files separately, uh, you know, or separated. And so I'd like to add some of those options so the user can see the display the way they want to work uh, is, the, is generally the whole point. Uh, oh yeah, I was going to do a uh, drag and drop. I can find something. Oh, the, the lack of click to front. Um, where is your oh some code? You have to work for it. Yes, yes. Can't find it. Well, hey. looking for some source actually but I can do that where did you go show interface there you are right. okay um, yeah so if I want to uh, search uh, to, to, to do this, okay. then I want to I want to take and uh, find files in dir and See where is your? Where did you put the current project work? Is it in code or data? Or work? Which project? The, the one you were just showing. In the ray trace. Yeah. Code in the ray trace. Oh, some code. Okay. Yeah. Right. So. 
I can uh, just find all the C files in, in code. That'll be a long time. Yeah, should be. <laughs> this is another one of these of various repositories on that disk. Mm -hmm. That's going to take a long time. It's going to be a long time. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of those. There we go. Don't need them all. Oh, now your your workbench thing is broken. I was going to use the uh, uh, <laughs> open open workbench window to find the location. Oh, why didn't it work that time? <laughs> what did you do? No. So, uh, of course, you can uh, you know take and, and drag and drop any file. Uh, onto it, so I use it quite often as a, just a, a reader, yeah. uh, and it'll keep the history and it, and it marks. It tells you it's external file on there, and the, the full path of the file is always down here from where it was. Uh, or of course, no matter where it's in, you can you know just take and uh, uh, send it uh, to editor or multi view web browser, of course, and uh, multi view. So we got a nice. So you set up. So and then you, you set up the uh, defaults. Now eventually, I, I will add a graphical uh, interface for setting more of the preferences, so you can do stuff. You know, because some of the things you can do within the the menus, quick uh, selection stuff, um, like uh, taking in and uh, setting up the fonts or the tab size or or the or the colors. You can set the different colors on here as well for. Um, Set the display pen. This is follows the the system pens uh, for whatever you want on here. And uh, what I didn't have I access to because this is just a standard um, uh, what's plain plain text edit? Is it called or text editor? Oh, text editor. The yeah. text editor uh, gadget from the standard um, system ones. Oh yeah. Classes. You need the rich text editor. Yeah. Oops, what was that again? Is that something over there? Right. Assignment to RAM or something? Yeah. That'll shut it up. Text editor, so it's, uh, text editor in in a read only read only mode. So it was limited to to you know what was publicly available. I don't know if there's any update for that class but that's that's coming. Otherwise, you do some more stuff. Who's S. Soli? Don't know. Troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I wanted to be able to set the background pen for the text editor. As well as the foreground pen, just for basic colors, you know. And then, of course, it does have the the graphical one on here. But I'm not going to start changing the GUI to to show you 
the uh, it does have a nice little uh, uh, gra uh, graphic blitting, blitting uh, weirdness that goes on with it when you scroll. Though when it's filling in that background pattern, and oh. as you know within the within that scroll area, and then you you scrolling, and then depending on the pattern, you can see it do this banding repeated uh, thing on there, with, you know, which is a little annoying. It does not. It doesn't lock it like a complete bitmap and, and scroll. It's so if you're working with something really simple like this, then you can't tell if it's repeating, you know, where where it's wrapping or slicing it. But you know, so I don't know if I can turn that on to even uh, show it to you. But but anyway, yeah, you can do uh, drag and drop of files onto there. <laughs> or if I'm uh, let's see, move to public screen. So, so we can get, um, uh, let's see, what do you got here? Where's, I'll just, uh, just open this up into a, uh, oh, oh, uh, yeah. open a new shell. Where do you have Sigmas installed? Build. In, in build? Is it build colon? Yeah. Build colon something. Sigmas that maybe. Cygnus, uh, for example, to um, uh, duplicate the workbench size. So now, now we've got Cygnus on its own screen. So we tell the tell it to move to a public screen. Now it's in the public screen list. So we can have the SDK browser move theoretically. Shows up in the public list though. It should accept it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the um, the actual uh, uh, commercial version, they, for as part of the AVD suite, uh, it has a its own uh, AVD workbench screen that you can you know quickly jump to as well as taking in. And going to public screen. So if I got, if you can set something up on a public screen that will accept it, I think I have run into this problem with Cygnus before, or didn't want to move to the Cygnus screen. I'm not sure why. But it does work for uh, uh, for other screens or. You know, anyway, the, the drag and drop works from uh, a different screen as well because you can you can pull down a screen and then drag something across the, the board or something does that too. So uh, structures, you know, so you can of course you can free browse any of the uh, uh, auto docs or anything like that. So I don't know if there's anything else I'm missing. I wanted to cover. Uh, clearing, clear the browser history, clearing the search results. Uh, so, search results will the way that gets cleared out. And uh, clearing the browser history that goes away. Just start clicking stuff on there. Oh, uh, side effect. If you, um, I noticed that if you you scroll onto uh, uh, something, so let's get a, a large file here, like a sec, right, so this, there's the entire autodoc. Um, yeah, I should mention that on there. So if you're clicking on, you're looking at the library, now if I click on the library on here at the top, you're getting the entire autodoc. Uh, but if you click on a sub-function, well then it 
breaks it out for you. You know, so now you're now you can't scroll this because it's just a snapshot of uh, what it found from that for this description. Um, but you can always jump back to here, or you can always go to the to the uh, auto docs uh, directly, of course. But I, I noticed that. Um, let's see, I don't know if it'll on here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, so something with the, with the uh, um, the text edit. If I'm clicking on it to like select and uh, and you know try to copy something. Now when I'm scrolling, it's in like a selection mode or edit mode and it's disabling the accelerator. It's kind of bypassing it. But if you double click onto something else, then it turns it right back on. <laughs> so it's just kind of a side effect I noticed with the, uh, the editor. So if you, if you are using this and you notice it's like, well, I clicked on it, it was, well, why is it scrolling slow now instead? You know, just double click somewhere else on the screen and it'll, it'll come right back. Because uh, you, know, you can kind of put yourself into, I clicked it once, I put myself into like select mode. Within the, within the editor, so, but it resets it on that, so, okay. So, any questions? Uh, a general question here, this is a really nice piece of software. Um, Thank you. Is, do you intend at some point when you get more cycles to return to AVD development, or is that kind of on hold until you get a sponsor? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely continuing AVD development. Uh, I'm, I am working with, uh, uh, mostly being on the lake at the moment, on other projects, um, trying to get some of the, the hardware uh, stuff fixed. Uh, I'm also working on the, uh, uh, part of that is, is the uh, templates. I had that other project, uh, AVD template, um, out there. And the current version, which I'm going to replace um, either while I'm here or when I get back, it's, uh, it, it's not completely updated to the uh, to the latest SDK, so it has a couple of compile issues you have to fix on there, and I've done that with the uh, with the newest version. Um, but so there, and I'm going to expand on on that as well. So I definitely am going to continue and uh, hopefully complete the uh, the whole ABD project and free ABD. I mean, the freeware version of the SDK browser is is part of the uh, the free ABD part of it. Um, and one of the focuses I think that's, that's going to be more immediate is the uh, um, uh, releasing up releasing an update for the template code. Uh, you know, I'm trying to get it so people can jump in and start programming. So I've got a template for a general purpose GUI application that you can build and run. Opens up a little window, sets itself up as a commodity, gives you some menus. You know, so you can just jump in and start adding to the reaction stuff and filling in functions. Um, I've done some more work with uh, my uh, versioning software, uh, increment version. Uh, I've got that pre-built. In fact, I, I brought it with me. I just updated builds for it on, uh, what did I bring? Amigo S4, uh, Linux, 64-bit, Mac, RBC, Mac, uh, Intel. Uh, I've, I've ported it to like 15 different machines. It's just a simple little command line tool that modifies the uh, uh, the header file to keep bumping the version for you, uh, which I use within my makes and, and stuff like that. So I've updated that to include um, not only declaring uh, within that version header file the version number and broken down into convenient use for within your program, either as a string or as uh, defines of each you know major, major minor maintenance build. But I've also uh, pre-built a, uh, a version string uh, for it. So uh, let's see where did I run this from again? So in the header file, it builds an Amiga-style version <coughs> string that you can just directly use. So it builds it, it builds it for you. Um, this one should be uh, the pickup and after. Now, if I, if I run it with a, a dash dash version on there, that's an internal where it's spitting out uh, the version for it. And uh, if I take and do a, a, a version command on it, or add full to it, then it adds. So this 
uh, SDK browser, uh, the copyright. It's just, it takes the pieces of what you've defined in the <coughs> version file and it glues it together into a you know, string, B, R, colon, you know, convenient use string for it. So I, I've done that. Um, but what I want to do is take it to the next step and uh, you know, build a, uh, uh, a little GUI installer and customizer. So you can say, okay, I want to start a new project. This is the template I want to use. And you can, you know, it'll pick up your preference files that you've already done before, or you can just fill it in and say author and all of that stuff. And then it'll start out with that header file uh, for you. Well, the other thing I did in the most recent version that wasn't in there is it generates that version header file um, from nothing if it doesn't exist.